Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a puzzle that was popular on Twitter from Dr. Catherine Young. I may have a PhD, but I'm also apparently failing fourth grade math. Here's the problem. The square below is made up of four small squares. Can you shade half of it so that the unshaded part is also a square? I love sharing puzzles online, and I think it's something we should all do. I myself share puzzles that I can't solve online, and I love getting help, and I love getting feedback. No matter how smart you are, even if you have a PhD or you've done a math degree, there are still going to be problems you can't solve. That's fine. I love that we can share this on the internet, and we can learn something new. So, here's a puzzle for kids that has stumped adults. Can you figure it out? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So here's a grid of two by two squares making up a larger square and we need to shade half of it. So the unshaded part is also a square. Now at first, this puzzle seems impossible. Shading half would suggest that you shade two of the four squares. So if you were to shade these two squares, then the remaining portion would be two squares that are unshaded, and this forms a rectangle. Now we have four squares, and we want to shade two of them, so there are six different ways we can do this. Here's one of the ways. This is not a solution. Here's another way. Here's a third way, which will leave two squares. Here's a fourth way, which leaves a rectangle. A fifth way, which leaves a rectangle. And finally, a sixth way, which leaves two squares. So none of these methods work. So the question is, how else can we shade the diagram in half? So let's think about this as an adult. Let's imagine that one of the small squares has a side length equal to one. So the other square also has a side length equal to one, and the entire large square has a side length equal to two. The total area of the large square will be two squared, or two times two, and that equals four. Now we want half of the area to be shaded. So half of the total will be four over two, which equals two. And we want this remaining half, which is unshaded, to be a square. So we need the unshaded square's area to be equal to two. So if we let the unshaded square have a side length equal to s, we need s squared to be equal to two, which means that s is equal to root two. So how are we going to get a square with a side length equal to root two? Let's think about this. Each square has a side length equal to one. So now the length of the diagonal of the square will be equal to square root of two. So let's shade this portion. We have a right triangle with each of the legs equal to one. So its hypotenuse will be equal to the square root of one squared plus one squared, which equals the square root of two. So let's repeat the shading in each of the other three small squares. We're going to end up creating a picture frame. And in the middle, we have a quadrilateral, which looks like a square. Now let's just go ahead and show this is in fact a square. Each of the shaded right triangles is an isosceles right triangle that bisects each small square. So bisecting a 90 degree angle will mean we have a 45 degree angle. The other acute angle will also be equal to 45 degrees. This is true for all of these unshaded triangles going around. Now in this unshaded quadrilateral, 45 degrees plus 45 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. So we have four right angles. Furthermore, the shaded isosceles right triangles are congruent to each other, so all of the hypotenuse lengths will be equal to each other. So we have four side lengths that are equal to each other and four right angles, and therefore, this is a square. We've shaded half of each of the small squares, which means we've shaded half of the total diagram, and we have left an unshaded square. So this is, in fact, a solution. We have shaded half of the diagram and the unshaded portion is also half of the diagram and also a square. 
we know it's half because we've shaded each of these small squares in half. So this is the solution that was probably intended and most people came up with. But you might be wondering, are there any other solutions? So how can we think about this? Well, here's one way. Let's imagine we rotate this square 45 degrees. So is this a solution? Notice that the square that is unshaded has exactly the same area as before it was rotated. That square was 50% of the total area, so this square will also be 50% or half of the total area. So that means the shaded portion has to be the other area, which will also be half of the total area. So in fact, we have shaded half of the large square, and the resulting unshaded portion is also a square. This is a solution. But now we can think about bending the rules to try to find more solutions. There's nothing specified that each of the four small squares have to be shaded each in half. So we can in fact move this unshaded portion. What if we put it to one of the corners? This would also be another solution. We can do this for any of the four corners. So we can move this to any of the four corners and we're going to get other solutions as well. The part that's shaded will be half the square and the part that's unshaded will be also half the square. People also thought about putting it to the middle of each side. So this will also be a solution. You can do this for each of the four sides of the square. So there are a lot more solutions than at first one might think. So let's characterize them. We have this rotated square this is the textbook answer. We also have this square in the center. Then we have solutions that don't involve shading each of the small squares exactly in half. These are solutions where the total large square will be shaded in half and the unshaded portion will be half of that area. So these are types of solutions, but are these the only solutions to the puzzle? Let's think about it. Let's go back to this diagram where we have an unshaded square in the center. What would happen if we were to arbitrarily rotate it and move it around? Do we have another solution right here? Let's think about it. The shaded area plus the unshaded area is the total area of the large square. But we know the unshaded area is half of the total because we've taken a known solution and just move this square around. Therefore, the shaded area is half of the total as well. In other words, we've shaded half of the large square, leaving a square that is unshaded. In fact, we can move this unshaded square around in any arbitrary way and we can get other solutions as well. This will be a solution. We can just move it over here. This will be a solution. We can really move it any way we want, and each of these will be a solution to the puzzle. So I really hope that if a student was approaching this problem, they wouldn't be limited to just thinking inside the box and thinking about those symmetric solutions. I would really hope that you can share one of these creative solutions, because that's what mathematics is about. It's not about just sharing the same tired old narrative, but it's actually about thinking about a problem differently and coming up with a solution that people didn't even think was possible. What a very interesting problem. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.